If it was so perfect, would we be doing it again is my question. Come on, you're the face. I'm the sidekick. That's how this works. I'm the short one, sidekick. Welcome to Chalice Farms TV. My name is Penn Lewis. And I'm Kiki Sherrod. And we're here today to show you some of the inside practices behind the best cannabis producers in the state of Oregon. We're here to show you some of the things that happen behind the scenes to create and cultivate craft cannabis products. Yes! <laughs> Welcome to Chalice Farms TV. We're here with the team from Bob Sled Farms. We wanted to talk to them about some of their amazing growing practices and the fact that they're actually growing a lot of their oil for head sauce extraction. We've got Kyler and Steven here. We want to just chat a little bit about what you guys do, what you guys are all about. Well, right now we're in our outdoor. We've already harvested this row. We're taking it all down to be flash frozen and extracted. Tell us a little bit about your outdoor grow and how you guys do your outdoor versus your indoor. What's happening out here? The whole idea of living soil is in the rainforest, there's all this lush, you know, beautiful fruit and vegetation that no one's taking care of. It's got its own ecosystem that's helping in. It makes it thrive. The plants that come down decompose and provide food for the plants growing back up. So we've just tried to emulate that environment, what would be normally waste, considered waste materials, our plants that we put back into the dirt, let it decompose, let the worms do their thing, and uh, let nature grow for us. Saying let the worms do their thing without any context is a little bit weird. So what do you mean when you say let the worms do their um, thing? So that's all part of the decomposing process is the worms are eating it, the decomposing matter, and breaking it down and actually, you know, pooping it out and that's what provides the nutrients for the plants is the, the worm. And that's a buzz term I'm hearing a lot recently, living soil, no-till. I want to touch on that a little bit, just tell people what that's all about and why it's so important. Big reason we're here is because we grow for, for our oil, as you said, and um, there's really no comparison when you're, when you're growing organic with the, you know, the terpene profile. And really when you're getting down to the head sauce, the terpenes are really what are making that pop. So uh, it sounds like you guys are mimicking a lot of organic gardening practices and what, what makes you guys want to do that? One of the things with organics is that you provide the entire ecosystem there and so when you have a bug that you don't want, rather than spraying some sort of awful chemical to kill everything and go scorched earth on it, we just provide a bug that would eat that bug rather than having to, you know, to put something that would really negatively affect the plant's flavor or the outcome of the plant itself. I mean the safety of the plant too to some degree. I mean if we're going to dry this and, and eventually smoke it or extract yes. it, then we need to make sure there's no pesticides or fungicides. Absolutely. I think that's awesome. <laughs> well, it allows us to be more sustainable and not rely on bringing in nutrients from, you know, a salt or some other product. We could actually, in the farm, grow all of the nutrients we need and then use them. Keeps everything local. And I noticed you guys have chickens back there and a couple of compost bins. It looks like you guys are starting some ground ground roots uh, composting. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, we have 12 chickens in the back, <laughs> um, but we actually feed them worms from the bins um, and then they eat them and they poop those out. And then it goes into the hay and whatever on the top. We scoop the hay and we put that back on at the end of the season. So then it uh, creates more food for the, for the soil. So is there basically like a mat of like decomposing material on the top and there's worms all underneath? Is yeah, that absolutely. what's happening? Yeah, awesome. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Have someone kind of dead leafing a plant over here. You guys are getting it ready for harvest. So what, what does that process look like? Is it any different outdoor or indoor? We strip the nugs and immediately want to freeze them to preserve all of the terpenes and the flavor and get that fresh, flash frozen, live extraction. By freezing it immediately before drying, we're able to re retain and keep up to 30% more terpenes. If we flash freeze it, then extract it, we can retain that more flavorful, terpene rich product. Now we're here in the flower room. You guys can't smell it in here, but it is intoxicating. It, it's wonderful. <laughs> and we've been, and I can speak for myself, but I've been in quite a few gardens and I haven't seen a lot of the things that I'm seeing in this farm. And so I want to touch base with these guys and just see what they're doing that's a little bit different from industry standard. First thing I notice is this massive light depth setup. Light depth is 
is actually to mimic darkness, mm -hmm. and the 12 hours of darkness is what tells the plant to start growing its nugs. Early season, you have too much light. You have 16 hours of natural sunlight. So what you're looking at above this black tarp is our light depth system that actually closes the ceiling and turns off the lights basically naturally. So we can, we can grow naturally with sunlight um, year round. In a room like this, how much cannabis flower can you harvest just from this room? So you're looking at, uh, at about 100 pounds of nugs, actually. Um, we, for these specific houses, we take this for full plant live resin. Um, so just about 600 to 700 pounds of wow. wet weight material comes out of this wow. house. And you know, it's approximately a 60 day flowering cycle with, uh, with we hope, about a week of downtime maximum. How many times do you flip or rotate this room throughout the season? As quickly as possible. Um, we pray to get six in a year. Um, you know, we definitely do four, but it really depends on the downtime in between harvest. Well, something that I'm seeing in, this, in the corner of the room, and I think that this is something every gardener has to find a creative solution for, how do we water, how do we water consistently, and how do we not overwater? Mm -hmm. And I know that you guys have a really cool system for that, so I definitely want to talk to you a little bit about that, Tim. What do you do to make your watering easier on you and more efficient? So we use Tromp Blue Mats. They're a, a self-regulating uh, irrigation system. And so each pot is getting its water needs. In these pots, there's gonna be a little carrot and with a clay uh, probe on it. And so as that clay dries out, it opens up a little uh, diaphragm that'll initiate that carrot to start watering. And so every single pot in here is going on and off with different water needs. I mean, I used to tell people that all the time. It's really easy to look at someone and say, oh yeah, just water the plant when it's thirsty. Oh, yeah. But just that, there's so much to that, mm -hmm. you know, and it takes so, so long to perfect that practice, it really does. So now that we've seen your process from basically start to finish, at least when it comes to your growing processes, uh, I want to see where all this product's going, because we touched on before, it's not actually going to be turned into just buds. It's not going to be dried and cured. You're going to turn it into a high terpene full spectrum extract. Absolutely. what we've been referring to thus far as head sauce. So I definitely want to see that process. I want to see what it looks like and, and just see what makes uh, your process so different. Let's go see your end product. Alrighty, everybody, we are here at the Clay Wolf facility with the team from Lunatech. Lunatech are the machines that all of the head sauce that we've checked out from Bobsled Farms are actually processed through. So we want to talk to those people, kind of hear from the horse's mouth why this machine is so impressive and why you guys have chosen to use this for your head sauce extraction. We got together. We saw a lack in the industry of professional equipment that was designed for cannabis extraction. So we got together and designed a fully automated hydrocarbon extraction system that meets and is compliant with all state regulations. And then after about six months of us working on it, we realized that you know no one else is doing what we're doing. No one else is building equipment that has precise temperature control that meets safety requirements that should be standard in the industry. And so then we decided to switch focus and build a system to sell to everyone. Yeah, so our automated controls let you push the start button and then you can be out of the extraction room while the machine's doing the extraction and you can be monitoring it from a safe area. Yeah, yeah exactly. and it's not only about safety, but with automation comes consistency, data, um, and really able to perfect the extraction process. We collect all the data that comes from the machine and then we can, once we get that in aggregate, we can analyze it and then we can develop new recipes based on that. So we can optimize the recipe based on big data sets to create a better product like this head size. Our machine has a viscosity selector so we could actually choose the amount of solvent that is left in the product. And on all other systems, you got guys that are like eyeballing it, shaking it around, but we can actually leave the exact amount of solvent we want in the product every time. So now that we know a little bit more about the Lunatec machine itself, I kind of want to dovetail this back with bobsled farms. I mean, with your dedication to craft product and quality product, why does Lunatec make sense as, as the medium to process all of that flour? Well, for consistency and quality. With automation, you get both. And with our temper control, well, you guys saw how we immediately flash freeze everything. Yep. We're able to maintain those flash frozen temperatures throughout the extraction process. So terpene preservation. Terpene really. preservation is everything. I want to talk to them a little bit about what they do to their product once it comes out of the Lunatech to ensure quality and cleanliness. Once it comes out of our system, 
we then purge it in these degassing ovens. We're able to get the THCA drop out of the solution and crystallize on the bottom and create that terpene rich layer on top.